there's been something of a quiet revolution in gaming graphics the past couple of years. Image upscaling technology has become widespread, delivering higher quality images at higher frame rates without requiring consumers to upgrade their graphics cards. Unlike older CRTs, modern monitors and TVs have fixed panel resolutions. They are capable of taking a sub-native source, say 720p or 1080p, and upscaling it to the panel's native resolution. But this usually gives the image a smeared, blurry look. Especially with your face up against the glass, you notice it. To avoid this, your GPU has to pass your TV or monitor a source resolution that either matches the fixed panel resolution or divides evenly into it. So for example, 1080p can be displayed cleanly on a 4K panel by quadrupling each pixel. But for your GPU, there's a big performance difference between 1080p and 4K. Now putting it 1080p on higher end cards leaves a lot of performance on the table, even at high or ultra in-game settings. It doesn't look great either, especially at larger panel sizes. On the other hand, at 4K, you might struggle to hit 60fps on all but the most powerful GPUs on newer titles. If we weren't constrained by the fixed panel resolutions of our monitors, what we ideally would want to do is render at the highest resolution possible that still allows the GPU to hit a stable 60 frames per second, while not leaving any performance on the table. To address this disconnect between ideal rendering and display resolutions, in recent years games have started to make use of in-engine scaling solutions. Let's say you're on a 4K panel. The game renders internally at some sub-4K resolution. The specific render resolution can be either fixed or variable, depending on the tech, and then upscales each frame algorithmically to the panel's native 4K resolution, handing your TV a clean 4K source to display. This algorithmic upscaling is cheap, computationally speaking, much cheaper than rendering out all 8.3 million pixels in a 4K panel natively, and looks miles better than directly rendering to the panel at a non-native resolution. The extra performance this opens up is then available to the GPU to push those higher frame rates. And it works great. Modern games like Warzone, Halo Infinite, Forza Motorsport 7 and Flight Simulator all make very effective use of in-engine upscaling. It's also been a staple on both Xbox and PlayStation consoles, allowing the One X and Pro consoles to output at 4K 60fps on a range of titles, using just 6 and 4 teraflop GPUs respectively, and mobile-grade CPUs. We've also seen NVIDIA and AMD start to incorporate hardware upscaling solutions in their drivers. In principle, these should be more performant than in-engine upscaling. NVIDIA's DLSS is the gold standard. It uses special processor cores on the 20 and 30 series RTX GPUs to do very fast, very high quality upscaling from sub-native resolutions. The results are amazing, as anyone who has seen DLSS in action can attest, especially the recent 2.3 update. On the AMD side, there's FidelityFX Super Resolution. Until recently, this was a simple spatial upscaler and noticeably less impressive than DLSS. However, as of the recent FSR 2.0 release, it's now temporal, taking information from multiple frames. By all accounts, it's much improved. But these hardware solutions and in-engine solutions require developer integration. If you enjoy older PC games and want to play them on a high resolution panel at high frame rates, you can't use either of those technologies. Instead, NVIDIA has offered its so-called image scaling feature for a couple of years now, but late last year it received a substantial redesign that made it both more performant and capable of producing a better looking image. Of course, not all older games need upscaling to hit a stable 4K60. On the contrary, we're used to year-on-year -year GPU performance gains quickly making many older games trivial to run maxed out. There are also plenty of older games that simply won't support the higher resolutions or, especially, frame rates available on modern monitors. Upscaling does nothing to help in those cases. But there are also a huge number of older games where the tech has obvious application. Many games made in the 2010s especially were made with the ability to scale to very high resolutions and in-game settings, making use of things like advanced lighting, high quality textures and expensive 8x anti-aliasing. Reshade is another great reason. If you're in the mood to pile on expensive shaders to your older games, you might want to claw back performance by upscaling. And even if you're not into the graphical candy, upscaling can be a huge help in targeting frame rates well north of 60, something that can have a materially positive impact on gameplay. But what makes this approach to performance so powerful is that it works across a range of older games and in a consistent manner. I've seen a lot of excellent comments on my review of Stalker Anomaly as to how to get the best performance out of the X-Ray engine specifically, and you should definitely follow that advice too. But Nvidia's image scaling provides a near universal hardware solution across engines and games. If you're on an NVIDIA card that supports it, I suggest you give it a try. As of the time of recording, AMD has just released its own universal image upscaling solution, Radeon Super Resolution. If you're on Team Red, that's well worth a look. I think the Stalker games are perfect candidates. I've recently been playing Anomaly and the excellent Escape from Pripyat 3.0 mod pack, which is what you're seeing here. 
using NVIDIA image scaling to render out a 4K image at 60 frames per second with high in-game settings and reshade. The result is markedly better than rendering to the panel at 1440p, which was my previous go-to, or lowering in-game graphics settings. Unfortunately, software-based solutions like OBS Studio and NVIDIA's own Shadowplay aren't yet capable of capturing the upscaled output produced by NVIDIA image scaling, which will require driver-level integration. Nor do I have a second PC dedicated to capturing. As a result, I can't yet show you any upscaled capture. But given how good image scaling is at approximating the quality of a native 4K image, and to emphasize the performance challenges of native 4K, the escape from Pripyat capture I'm showing you today is from a 3060 Ti struggling to hit 60 FPS at native 4K, with a small number of reshade shaders applied. I've got new hardware coming soon that should allow me to capture upscaled output properly, and in the future I intend to include native and upscaled image comparisons when I review older games. I find this stuff really interesting. But there's another, more specific reason that hardware upscaling is a great fit for Stalker. Like many games of the era, Stalker's X-Ray engine doesn't provide a particularly stable image in stock form. Something you can clearly see here in the characteristic shimmering and aliasing of foliage, especially when the camera is moving. The engine's native anti-aliasing solution helps with this, of course, but doesn't do away with it entirely and is computationally expensive. Reshade can help here too, but ultimately relies on lower quality non-temporal anti-aliasing or worse, brute force image softening, which is a pretty big departure from the game's stock aesthetic and one which won't appeal to everyone, myself included. It also requires knowledge and experience to get right and has to be set up on a per game basis. NVIDIA's other image upscaling tech, DLSS, is very successful at addressing aliasing and shimmer in large part because it has access to motion vectors from multiple frames. It uses that information to actively track moving game elements and produce a better image. But as I said, DLSS requires active integration by developers and is usually not an option on older games. Assuming you don't have access to motion vectors or multiple frames, which on the Stalker games, we don't. One of the best ways to clean up this kind of unstable image is to increase your rendering resolution. No, it doesn't completely resolve the shimmering, but Stalker looks markedly cleaner and more stable at high resolutions, either outputted natively or using hardware upscaling. My favorite example of the impact that rendering resolution has on image stability is Creative Assembly's 2014 masterpiece, Alien Isolation. The art direction is out of this world, but at lower resolutions, the image is quite unstable. As the game has lots of high contrast spaces, inky blacks with harsh light sources, the effect is noticeable. But coming back to isolation last year, I was struck by the huge difference that high resolutions make to its image quality. Creative Assembly had the foresight to use high resolution textures that still look good more than seven years after release. Upping the resolution to 4K dramatically reduces aliasing and shimmer, giving isolation the pristine image quality it deserves. Doing this natively, of course, is much more GPU intensive, but hardware image scaling gets you the best of both worlds. A sharper, more temporally stable image, and higher frame rates than native 4K. From my time with Escape from Pripyat and Alien Isolation, the edge detection algorithm in use by image scaling often seemed to do a better job than native 4K with edge aliasing. In both games, playing at the 85% setting, I felt yielded a more temporally stable image in addition to a substantial performance uplift. Universally applicable driver level upscaling is a tool that allows us to resolve this tension between panel resolutions, render resolutions and game performance for older titles, ensuring that you're not leaving any GPU performance on the table. It's a pretty big deal, I think, but I haven't seen it getting a lot of attention. I intend to use this on every title that doesn't support DLSS, which is most of them, and that struggles to hit 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. But what I didn't expect coming into this was that image scaling might even be preferable to native 4K in specific scenarios where you have older games with temporally unstable images. And if you're already happily playing something at 4K60, image scaling can allow you to push the boat out on frame rates, assuming the title in question supports it, of course, particularly when combined with variable refresh rate display. If you're sold, and assuming you're on the latest drivers, you can enable it in the NVIDIA control panel under Manage 3D Settings, Image Scaling. Alternatively, you can do it through GeForce Experience. By default, it's off. You'll also be asked here if you want to apply a sharpening filter. The default is a global 50%, but you can also set it on a per game basis. You'll need to experiment here to see what works for you. You should also be able to adjust it in-game in many titles by hitting Alt F3. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that to work with X-Ray Engine titles. Once enabled, you'll see five new sub-native virtual resolutions available to you. 85%, 77%, 67%, 59%, and 50% of 4K, assuming you're on a 4K panel. Enabling image upscaling on any given game is as simple as choosing one of those virtual sub-native resolutions from the in-game settings. 
This tells the GPU to activate image scaling and upscale the output image to your panel's native resolution. One issue I ran into immediately is that on the Windows desktop, vertical black bars appeared on either side of my 4K display, an LG OLED, immediately suggesting an aspect ratio issue. After doing some digging, the solution is actually pretty simple. It does seem that a number of brands have the issue, so if you're using a 4K TV as your monitor and run into this, I'll leave a couple of links in the video description below that will get you up and running. Another quirk I ran into is that sometimes the upscaling appeared not to correctly activate when loading into a game from the Windows desktop. To help with this, enable image scaling's discrete on-screen display. If it's working properly, you'll see NIS in green font. If it's blue or doesn't appear, try switching a game to your panel's native resolution and then back to the virtual resolution. That's it from me. I hope that was informative and I highly recommend you check out image scaling if you have a title with these pain points. I'm also going to do a separate video on image downscaling, an alternative technology which might be useful to you if you've got a high-end GPU and or a sub 4K panel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.